Do you think that you're training your fast twitch muscle fibers the right way? Chances are that you aren't. That's because there's five levels to it and most people never get past the first few. In this video, we're breaking down each level of fast twitch muscle fiber training. I'm gonna show you how to train for each level, explain the benefits, and most importantly, tell you how to level up and make your training more effective. So whether you're just getting started or you're an experienced athlete, understanding these five levels will change the way you train forever. And make sure you stick around till the end because I'm gonna be revealing the exact training methods that we use with NBA athletes to build explosive power and unmatched endurance and conditioning. All right, level number one, we're gonna call the slacker. That's because this level is only doing the very bare minimum. For example, Maybe this person just wants to activate their muscles fast. So they start doing a bunch of line hops and really fast twitchy movements, thinking that that's all they need to train their fast twitch muscle fibers. We're gonna see as we move into the other levels that there are a lot more ways to train your fast twitch muscle fibers than just doing fast footwork. But don't worry, that's not all that level one is doing. They're also throwing in some tib raises because they saw on the internet somewhere that it's the most important muscle for jumping athletes. Now, I don't really have anything against tib raises specifically, but it's not really as important as building basic strength with heavy split squats and squats and other big compound movements. To wrap up level one, maybe this person's also throwing in some bicep curls because you know what? Basketball is a sleeveless sport after all. Overall, we're gonna call this level one. This is the very bare minimum and you're gonna get very bare minimum results from this type of training. Let's go ahead and move on to level two. Level two, we're gonna call the dabbler. Now they're dabbling in other movements that are a little bit more intense. For example, at level two, you might see exercises like a box jump, heavy squats, Romanian deadlifts, a backwards sled drag, and plyo push-ups. Now these are all pretty solid exercises for training your fast twitch muscle fibers. But that said, there's still a lot of things missing out of this program. Specifically, when you wanna improve your vertical jump, a lot of people think of just doing box jumps to start because it seems like the most obvious plyometric movement. But what if I told you that box jumps aren't really even a plyometric exercise? Plyometric exercises involve what's called the stretch shortening cycle when muscles rapidly stretch and shorten. We don't really get this with box jumps. And we're gonna have to get to levels three through five to see what really is gonna help improve that vertical jump. Level two also, as you can see, lacks conditioning, power work, and unilateral work. So let's go on to level three where we're gonna start to see a little bit more of that stuff. All right, now we're on to level three and we're gonna call level three the grinder. This is where you're really starting to take training seriously and pushing through with determination. Okay, so what does level three training look like? Now we're starting to get into a more of a program rather than just a handful of exercises. For example, maybe you're training three times per week. On Monday and Friday, you're doing the same workout. You're doing repeated hurdle jumps, which now includes landing forces. So after each jump, you're quickly absorbing force and creating force, which is going to activate your fast twitch muscle fibers and be a more effective plyometric than just box jumps. On this Monday and Friday workout, you're also doing power cleans. Power cleans are gonna be a little bit more explosive than just doing squats. There's a heavy reversal when you catch the barbell and then you accelerate it upward. This is a really unique way to train your fast twitch muscle fibers with heavy weight. That said, we're also gonna do heavy split squats on this Monday, Friday workout. Now we're doing a unilateral exercise with really heavy weight here. A lot of people think that heavy weight doesn't train your fast twitch muscle fibers, but that's actually not true. Your fast twitch muscle fibers activate whenever you're moving quickly, but they also activate with moving heavy weights. In level three, we're starting to see a really good balance between some power focused movements that are more explosive and some heavy strength movements. For example, that heavy split squat. Heavy split squats are also a really great way to train your patellar tendon. A lot of athletes doing fast twitch muscle fiber training for soccer, basketball, football, put a lot of stress through the patellar tendon in the front of their knee. If all you're doing is the really fast movements like sprinting and jumping, but you're not doing heavy, slow controlled loads, that patellar tendon pain can start to flare up more frequently. Some other exercises in this program would include a bench press, lat pull down superset. So that way we're not just training the lower body, but we're also getting some upper body work in because especially for sports like football and basketball that are contact sports, we're gonna need to build some size to really play the positions well. Level three also has a Wednesday workout that is different from the Monday Friday workout. Wednesday's workout is going to include dumbbell jumps, sprints, seated rows, leg extensions, and Nordic hamstring curls. Again, I think this is a pretty solid session. Dumbbell jumps can be really good for what we call under speed training. That means that we're moving with a little bit extra body weight, usually about 10% 
more than our total body weight. This can prepare my body to be even more explosive when I'm not holding dumbbells and I'm just jumping with body weight. Regularly training sprints every week on Wednesday is a really good way to prepare your body for those fast movements in sprinting, like the fast hamstring lengthening. And then with those leg extension and Nordic hamstring curls, we have some isolation work for specific muscle groups. So overall, there's a lot of pros to level three. Power and strength work, full body, pretty decent fast twitch muscle stimulus with some heavy work and some fast movements, but there are some things that this program's lacking. For example, this program lacks a variety of landing forces. Overall, it's pretty solid, but with a little bit more effort and strategy, we could take this up another level. All right, next we have level four, the juggernaut. This is where we're bringing focused energy and commitment, we're seeing solid results, we're measuring progress, and we're moving with force, making strides towards peak performance. An example of what someone at this level might be training like would be something like this. Maybe Monday and Friday, they have a power and plyometric focused training session. Their plyometric training involves two different categories. Number one is extensive plyometrics, meaning lower intensity work. It's variable with a lot of different landing forces that's really preparing them for the more intense work. Their extensive plyometrics include things like backwards pogo jumps for two sets of 10 yards, light bounding for two sets of 10 yards, and light lateral hops for two sets of 20 seconds. The second part of their plyometric training routine involves intensive plyometric training, which is, as it sounds, more intense. This might involve, for example, bounds for maximal distance, two sets of 20 yards. They might also train lateral bounds, two sets of 10 yards. As the athlete puts a ton of force through one foot, that leg is gonna be taking a lot of weight, going through that intense stretch shortening action and training the body to jump higher. Also with intensive plyometrics, these athletes are gonna be doing approach jumps. For example, if their goal is to dunk, they might do approach jumps approaching the rim, working on their timing and their speed to dunk, say a tennis ball, five to eight times. Over time, they could build up to a bigger ball and more specific with their stepping, so that way this training is best translating to their goal of improving vertical jump. Importantly though, you don't wanna just do approach jumps because this is a lot of stress through the leg in the exact same way. So you do want variability in your plyometric training, not just approach jumps. So some other intensive plyometrics that they might be training would be something like a depth jump. A depth jump involves stepping off of a box and then quickly absorbing force and jumping as high as possible. This level four athlete may be doing four sets of four repetitions of depth jump. Typically you wanna do these depth jumps from a slight slightly higher height than your vertical jump. And then rounding out the start of this power and plyometrics training session, this athlete might work on some deep split squat jumps. This is an exercise that I have some of my pro basketball athletes doing because we want them to yield and absorb force through their knee, not just their hip. Moving into the weight room section of this level four training, we have two different exercises, a push jerk and a trap bar deadlift. So their goal in the weight room has now shifted towards being more powerful and expressing the strength that they have quickly. This means that they chose exercises like a push jerk for three sets of three and a trap bar deadlift for four sets of four. Importantly, they're gonna use a weight for these that they could do for about eight to 10 reps, but instead of doing all 10, they're just gonna do three to four reps very fast, very explosively. This power and plyometric training session may end with some more accessory work. For example, maybe they're training a heavy leg extension isometric to really build their patellar tendon, or maybe they're doing a Cossack squat or some lateral lunge variation to open up their hips. While this level four athlete had a power and plyometric training session on Monday, Friday, their Wednesday session is gonna be more strength focused. This likely would still start with some athletic looking movements, A skips and other skip variations, hip mobility, some med ball rotational throws, some single leg step up jumps, and maybe some plyo pushups. For their strength work, maybe they're hitting a reverse lunge at 80% one rep max for three sets of five, supersetted with a dumbbell single arm row. They might wrap up this strength focused sessions with some accessories like hip flexor strength training with a hip flexor march or a manual resisted hip flexor exercise, some core work, and maybe even some single leg Romanian deadlifts. Overall, at level four, we're at a very solid program, checking all the boxes with a good balance of intensive and extensive plyometric work, strength and power work, and multiple planes of motion. Athletes going through this level of programming aren't going to lose hip mobility just from heavy squatting, and they are gonna be prepared from doing more plyometrics than just box jumps that we saw at earlier levels. Really the only con at this level is that it lacks that professional touch that we're really gonna see in level five. 
All right, before we get to level five, I do wanna tell you about our sponsor, 10,000 and the interval shorts. These are my new favorite workout shorts. They are stretchy and comfortable. They have a liner that makes them really great for running as well as for any athletic movements that you're doing. If you're like me and you wear athleisure wear, pretty much everywhere, every day, then these are definitely gonna be an upgrade that you wanna to make to your wardrobe. If you're like me, you probably have a bunch of pairs of black shorts, but 10,000 has a ton of different color options so you can actually make some better looking workout outfits. The interval shorts are great. They have deep, stretchy pockets, as well as a zip pocket for things that you wanna keep a little bit more secure, and they hold up to the most intense gym activities. So if you're looking to upgrade your workout gear, check out 10,000 in the link in the description below, and don't forget to use code MOVEMENT for 20% off. Thank you for 10,000 for sponsoring this portion of the video and supporting our mission to make the world stronger. Now, back to the video. All right, now we're moving on to level five, which is the professional. This is putting in the detailed work every day to reach the apex of your potential. I'm really lucky to get a lens into this level of training from all the professionals that work out at our gym, Motion Fitness here in Charlotte, as well as all the previous facilities and athletes that I've worked with. So level five is gonna include all of the same things as level four, but with a few extra touches. Extra touch number one is what we call the bracketing technique. The way that I like to do this is with something called band assisted jumps. This involves placing a band around a high anchor point or a squat rack and then pulling on that band to reduce your body weight by about 10%. This paired with dumbbell jumps where you're going a little bit over speed, a little bit under speed, back and forth, can be a really great way to improve your vertical jump. And then extra touch number two in that level five program is going to be single leg hopping. So we're gonna add this to our intensive plyometric movements and single leg hops are honestly probably the most difficult plyometric movement. That's because we have to take our entire body weight on one leg. It also requires this very quick cycling action in the leg. So once you push off, you really have to drive that knee up to get that leg back for the next jump. The third extra touch to this level five program is going to be resisted sprinting and lateral band work. Shout out to PJF Performance because he has some of the best thick bands for this. A fourth small touch that I think can be a really great addition is including what's called overcoming isometrics. This is something I've talked about in other videos, but it basically involves pushing a barbell that's fixed into the rack. Overall, I think this is a really good bang for your buck movement to throw a few sets of four to five second pushes into your workout. The fifth small addition to make this a true level five program is using something like a velocity-based training device. This Vitrue device measures exactly how fast the barbell is moving. If you wanna execute at the highest level with or without the velocity-based training, your focus should always be to push the bar as hard as possible and move it as fast as possible. This maximal intent is really important for high-level training and actually measuring that velocity and getting that feedback is a really good way to encourage it. And then the last final touch that I would put on level five training is regular testing. There are a ton of ways you can do this, whether that's just measuring your vertical jump each week, testing on force plates, testing your strength levels every three to four weeks, or testing your sprint speed every week. The important thing though is that especially at level five, you wanna be having specific goals and measuring your progress towards those goals every single week. So regardless of where your fast twitch muscle fiber training sits right now, I hope this video has given you an idea of how you can level up to that next level and make your training more effective. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe so don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.